What type of VM user are you? Are you like me where you run maybe just one or two at a time? Or are you the person running your own personal AWS data center in the closet of your spare bedroom? Regardless of the user that you are, you're going to want to monitor your VMs. On our host machines, we can use tools such as Top or HTOP. For VMs, there's VertTop. This is B from Taytalk Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to monitor your VMs with VertTop. Stay with me. I've got a favorite ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like it, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button for notifications. Also, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it, give it a dislike if you didn't like it. Lastly, let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comments section below. Let's do this thing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the desktop. Now, let me go ahead and bring up the man page for Burtop. All right, so Vertop is described as a top-like utility for virtualization stats. So what's Top? Top is an OG application for monitoring your um, monitoring your your Linux system from the command line. It's going to give us physical statistics on the machine as well as process statistics on the machine. This is not something I'm going to be covering in this video, uh, but if you do want me covering this topic in the future, let me know down in the comments below. Now, what we need to do is we need to talk about installing Vertop because it doesn't come installed by default on on pretty much any Linux distribution. So you're going to have to do it yourself. Now, it's pretty easy. You're going to do sudo dnf install Vertop. Now, you'll want to take into account the package manager that you're going to use. I'm on a Red Hat based system, so I'm using DNF. If you're on a Debian or Ubuntu based system, it's going to be the apt package manager. So just substitute apt or sorry, substitute DNF for app. And then, inst um, and then any other distribution, make sure you consult that distribution's documentation for installing vert top. Now, let's go ahead and complete the command. We're going to put in the password. Perfect. We've got that installed now. Now, to go ahead and run it, it's pretty easy. We just do sudo vert top. And make sure you are root or sudo when running it. Cool. Now we're here on the home page or the default page, whatever you want to call it. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of start talking about what's going on here. So what Vertop is actually going to do is it's going to show you stats for, for uh, from the host system's perspective. So it's going to show you what resources these VMs are using from the host system. The purpose of this tool is to monitor guest usage of host system resources, not the actual VM's resources as well. The usage on the VM is going to be different is I shouldn't say is going to be different, but it's going to is it may be different than what we're seeing here in Vertop because the purpose of Vertop is and, and really when we're talking about virtualization, one of the challenges with it is is making sure, especially if it's a dedicated virtualization server, like you're running in some kind of cloud environment, is, is you're going to have to balance the resources used by the virtual machines. You, you want to be careful and in, in not over provision, which means that you won't you assign out more resources. Uh, than are actually available, you know, and, and this is actually something that I see from time to time when I'm seeing folks setting up virtual machines is they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to give everybody four cores. And that's great. But if if you have, you know, say if you only have eight cores and then you have three VMs and each one of them has four cores, well, what happens when, you know, two of those VMs are maxed out at 100%? <laughs> there goes there goes your eight cores. You know, so in you know, you're going to shut you're going to you're going to bring down the host system unless you have, you know, things in place that are going to go ahead and prevent that from happening. And, and this is one way that you can kind of help make sure that your VMs are behaving nicely, that they're not using up too much of the system resources, you know, and and keep in mind if they're if you're seeing some kind of cr uh, crazy spikes in usage, there may be a problem with the v uh, with the VM and you may want to go ahead and look into that. So by default, this tool is going to update every three seconds and it's available on all major distributions, typically through their package manager repository. So let's talk about the banner here. This top this top banner this top row is going to give us a system time. It's going to give us the CPU architecture and the cores. It's going to give us the CPU's base frequency. It's going to give us the total amount of system RAM. Now it's also in the second row it's going to give us the total number of virtual machines or domains. It's going to give us the number of active, the number of running, the number of sleeping, the number of paused, and the number of inactive domains. Now, this down here is going to give us some more information on specific domains that are running. So let's go ahead and cover that information. Now, two of the first things that probably stand out here are percentage of CPU and percentage of memory used. 
And these are gonna be percentages of the host system resources used. So currently we're using roughly about 18% of the available host memory. And then we're really not using a whole lot of CPU usage. Honestly, it's probably, you know, it's, it's below point, uh, it's below 0.1%. So that's why you're not really seeing anything there. Like it's there, but it's just, it's just so minuscule that it's not registering inside of the tool. Now this first column right here is going to be the ID, which is going to be the libvirt ID of the virtual machine. So this one right here is one, this one is two. The next column is going to be the state of the domain. These currently have R's because they're running. And that's what R means is that the virtual machine is running. If it had a question mark there, that would indicate it is unknown. If it is S, that would mean it was blocked. If it was a P, that would mean that it would be paused. If it's D or O, that would be shut down. If it's X, it would be crashed. And if it's M, it would mean that it was been, had been suspended by guest power management. And then this last thing right here, uh, or the second to last thing is gonna be the time, which is gonna be the total amount of CPU time used by that virtual machine. And you can tell which one I started first because not only is it one, but also the CPU time is much higher than it is on the second one. And then lastly, this column is gonna tell you the name of the VM or the domain. Cool, right? All right, so there's a few keyboard, keyboard keys that you can use to get different looks of different st stats that are gonna be uh, available to you. Now, keep in mind, when we're talking about any keys that are being used or any, um, any sorting, these are all gonna be case sensitive. So just be mindful of that. Now, a few keys to know is going to be the zero key. Now, when we're talking about the zero key, the zero key is going to always bring us back to the home screen. Now we can't do it right now because we're already at the home screen, but I can actually show you that when we go to our next screen, which is going to actually show us the physical CPUs on the host machine. So right here, we've got all of the hope, we've got all of the physical cores, which is, uh, sorry, the logical cores on my system, which in my particular case, I am running an eight core, 16 thread CPU. So that's why you're seeing 16 different, um, 16 different CPUs here. And it's gonna give us the percentage per CPU core. Um, keep in mind, again, going back to what I said earlier, because of the amount of usage is very, very minimal by the CPUs currently, because they're just literally sitting there. That's why you're just seeing zero for all of them. Now, if I were to ramp up the load, you would start to see that ramp up as well. All right, now let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and show you how to get back to the default again. Cool, see, right? That's the zero key. Cool, one takes us there, zero takes us back. And keep in mind, this banner up here is going to stay. And one of the things I just kind of realized that I didn't cover was this right here is up here, it's gonna give you a summary of the CPU as well as tell you the total uh, the total memory currently being used by guests, which in my particular case is gonna be eight gigabytes. Now, let's talk about the, the next key that I, wanted to, that I wanna show you, which is going to show you uh, network interfaces. And to do that, you're gonna use the two key. So this is, of course, we can see how to identify these. We can see that we've got the same IDs here and we've got the same names here. Now, you're gonna see this down here, which is gonna be the interface. This is gonna be the interface that's being used by the virtual machine. And you notice here, it's the it's gonna be the one that's assigned to it, VNet zero and VNet one. Because remember, we're doing this from the host machine's perspective, not from the VM's perspective. And then it's gonna give us a few other uh, columns with information in them. Now let's cover those columns. So this first one right here is going to be network bytes received. And this is gonna be also available on the default screen. This next one is going to be network bytes transmitted, uh, which is also going to be on the default screen. Network bytes received just means network, network uh, bytes that have come in. Transmitted means network bytes that have gone out. This next one is going to be the network packets received, which are different than bytes. These are actual packets of network data. And these are going to be packets that have been come in or been received by the, the, uh, the uh, virtual machine. And then this next one is going to show us uh, network bytes transmitted, which is going to, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to tell us network packets transmitted, which is going to be the number of packets that the VM has sent out. Now we've got one more, we got one more uh, screen that I wanna go ahead and show you. And that's gonna show us disk and uh, block device information. And this is going to be you're going to use key three for this. All right. Now you can you're going to see two pieces of information here. 
So you're going to see an SD, you're going to see an SDA, and you're going to see a VDA. Because what what the SDA is doing is it's indicating that it's using uh, disk SDA on the host machine, and then on the VDA, it's using the um, it's that's the actual disk that is assigned to the virtual machine. That's like if you look at the virtual machine, it's using VDA. And then you've got a couple of other columns, or I shouldn't say a couple, four additional columns here with information. And this first one is going to be disk bytes read. So how many how many bytes is it read read, uh, read from the from the disk? And this next one is going to be uh, uh, disk bytes written, which will be the number of bytes written to the disk. And then this one right here is the number of uh, disk read request, which is also on the default screen. And then it's also going to give us the disk write request, which is also on the default screen. How many like how many times is it uh, requested to read? How many times is it requested to write? All that kind of stuff. And you'll and right now they're just literally chilling there. That's why you're not seeing any any kind of uh, much activity there. Like it, you've probably seen it kind of go up as we've been kind of going through some of the screens, but right now there's just not a lot going on. So that's why we're that's why we're seeing it. All right, and. Last thing that I want to go ahead and show you is the help menu. Well, there's actually kind of two things here that I want to show you. The help menu, which gives us information on the main keys that are going to be used, right? How to quit, how to set update intervals. I'm not going to really show you that here because you just follow this here. Uh, faces, uh, which would be, um, I'm sorry, just the help, which is help right here. And then B, toggle block information, request bytes. And then it gives us the different display modes. Then it gives us sorting. Sorting is, I, I would like to show it to you, but they're the, the top one's already the top one. So it's not really going to sort it by those, but you can use these. And remember, they're case sensitive. So P will sort by CPU percentage. M will sort by memory percentage. T will sort by time. Uh, N will sort by ID. And F will, you can actually input the select field and in, in, interact with it interactively that way. Now, to go ahead and get out of this screen, you're going to hit Q. And then to go ahead and quit Vertop, you're just going to hit Q. So pretty cool, right? Vertop is a great tool for your virtualization tool belt. Uh, don't forget to check out the other videos in my Linux virtualization series. If you're caught up on that, check out this other video instead. Thank you so much for watching my video and have the greatest of days.